In the first module, we have introduced the background to the patentability requirements for a computer implemented invention. In this module, we will go deeper and discuss how a computer implemented invention is examined with respect to the requirements of Article 52 EPC, namely exclusion, industrial application, novelty, inventive step. The exclusion check can be illustrated as follows. As soon as there is at least one technical feature, the whole claim has technical character and is therefore not excluded from patentability according to Article 52.2 and 3 EPC. If there is no technical character, then the claimed subject matter is excluded from patentability. If the claim has technical character, then there is a need to assess what aspects of the subject matter claimed contribute to its technical character. This assessment will be shown later in the examination of inventive step. Let us assume that the claim is not excluded from patentability, that is, the claimed subject matter has technical character. The following requirements have to be met. Industrial application, novelty, inventive step. We will now look at each of these requirements in turn. The requirement of industrial application is prima facie met by all patent applications in the technical field of computing since computing means and programs for computers can be produced on an industrial scale. The requirement of novelty is determined by the answer to the following question. Are all claimed features known from a single prior art document? If the answer to this question is yes, then the claim does not meet the requirements of Article 54 EPC due to lack of novelty. If the answer to this question is no, then the claimed subject matter is novel. The examination now proceeds to the assessment of inventive step. An inventive step is acknowledged when it is considered that the claimed subject matter presents a non-obvious technical contribution over the prior art. For an objective assessment of inventive step, the so-called problem-solution approach is used. First, the closest prior art is established. Then, according to the problem-solution approach, those features that are not known from the closest prior art are identified and their technical effects are determined. Based on these technical effects, an objective technical problem is formulated and is presented to the person skilled in the art. An opinion is now formed as to whether or not it would be obvious for the skilled person, with knowledge of the prior art, to solve the problem posed in the manner described in the claim. Applying the problem-solution approach is more complex when the claimed subject matter consists of technical and non-technical aspects. We will now see how such a so-called mixed-type claim is examined. To carry out an objective and consistent examination of a mixed-type claim, an assessment is required to determine the technical aspects and non-technical aspects of the claimed features. This commences with the identification of those aspects which, when considered in isolation, constitute subject matter or activities in the sense of Article 52, paragraphs 2 and 3. These identified aspects may be termed the non-technical aspects of the subject matter. The remaining aspects of the claimed subject matter have technical character per se and may be termed the clearly technical aspects. The assessment continues with the identification of any non-technical aspect which interacts with the clearly technical aspects of the claimed features to cause a change in the physical nature or technical functioning of the clearly technical aspects. To perform this assessment, it has to be determined whether any non-technical aspect is involved in causing a technical effect in combination with the clearly technical aspects and hence contributes to the technical character of the claimed subject matter. If any such aspect is identified as being present, it is to be considered for the assessment of inventive step. Two examples now follow to demonstrate this assessment. Further, guidance on how to determine what does and does not contribute to the technical character of a subject matter 
is given through the decisions of the Boards of Appeal. Some of the most relevant decisions are discussed in detail later in this module. In this first example, a computer-implemented method is used to control a physical process by analysing a functional relationship between two parameters. The method comprises a series of mathematical steps which are used to generate data to extend the range of one of said parameters. This range is then used in the control of the physical process. Therefore, the claim appears to be made up of clearly technical aspects as well as non-technical aspects. The clearly technical aspects of the claim lie in the following two parts. Firstly, the method is implemented in a computer. The adaptation of a computer for carrying out a method being a clearly technical function. Secondly, the method is used in the control of a physical process. The application of a method to control a physical entity having technical character. The mathematical steps in the middle of the claim, when considered in isolation, are non-technical aspects since they belong to the field of mathematical methods excluded under Article 52 2A. However, on further analysis, it is determined that these steps contribute to the technical character of the invention since without them, the controlling of the physical process would be impossible. Therefore, these mathematical steps are not purely non-technical aspects because they contribute to the technical character of the claim considered as a whole. All the features of the claim are therefore to be considered in combination in the assessment of inventive step. In this example, a method of ordering is implemented on a computer where the method comprises the following steps. Firstly, inputting order information into a computer, the order information containing an order code. Secondly, storing the order information in the computer. And finally, transmitting the order data containing the order code to a central management computer unit for processing. The claim therefore comprises clearly technical aspects as well as non-technical aspects. The clearly technical aspects of the claim lie in the following. Firstly, the method is implemented in a computer. The adaptation of a computer system for carrying out a method is a technical function. Secondly, the basic functions of the computer, including inputting, storing and transmitting data, have technical character. The method steps, however, when considered in isolation from their implementation in a computer system, define a business method. Such business method steps are excluded from patentability under Article 52 2C and are non-technical aspects. On further analysis, it is determined that these non-technical aspects do not contribute to the technical character of the invention since the data processed does not constitute the operating parameters of a computer, nor does the data affect the physical technical functioning of a computer and the claimed process does not cause a further technical effect. Therefore, these business method steps are purely non-technical aspects. They make no contribution to technical character and thus the recognition of an inventive step cannot be based in any way on them. To recap what we have previously explained, it is the technical character of the claimed subject matter which is relevant in the assessment of inventive step. In general, we look to see whether any non-technical aspect combines with the clearly technical aspects to cause a technical effect. Here are some examples of questions we may ask with respect to the non-technical aspects. Do they only have a cognitive content directed to an observer? Or does said content impact the technical function of the method or apparatus defined in the claim? Do they describe or model entities only at the logical level or do they define a specific technical implementation? Do they circumvent a technical hurdle or do they assist in overcoming it? Where it is established that one or more apparently non-technical aspects actually do contribute to cause a technical effect, it will be included in the assessment of inventive step along with the clearly technical aspects of the claim. All those aspects not contributing to technical character and hence purely non-technical are not relevant in the assessment of inventive step. Now that we have identified what is to be taken into consideration for inventive step, 
let us look at the elements of the problem-solution approach itself. The following elements and questions have to be taken into consideration with respect to the problem-solution approach. State of the art and closest prior art. What is to be considered as the state of the art from which the closest prior art is to be established? Objective technical problem. How is the objective technical problem defined? Skilled person. What are his or her technical abilities? We will now look at each of these elements in turn to answer the respective questions. The state of the art should be understood as state of technology. It consists of prior art information relevant to some field of technology. Therefore, the closest prior art will be chosen from a field of technology and not from a field which belongs to the list of exclusions, like commerce and business methods. Once the closest prior art has been established and all the technical differences between the subject matter of the claim and the closest prior art are identified, the objective technical problem is formulated from these differences. The problem must be a technical problem. It must actually be solved by the claimed subject matter and the problem must be one that the skilled person in the particular technical field might realistically be asked to solve. The objective technical problem must not contain pointers to the technical solution or partially anticipate it. However, where a non-technical aim is described in a claim, this aim does not contribute to the technical character. Therefore, it may appear in the formulation of the technical problem to be solved, in particular as a constraint that has to be met. A skilled person, within the meaning of Article 56 EPC, is skilled in a technical field. With respect to computer-implemented inventions, he is an ordinary practitioner skilled in the field of information technology. He is aware of common general knowledge in the field of information technology at the filing date of the application, but has no knowledge whatsoever regarding non-technical fields. To illustrate the proceeding, starting from a claimed subject matter, all non-technical aspects are reviewed to determine if any of them contribute to the technical character. On the basis of the technical content of the claimed subject matter, the closest prior art is then established and the differences between the claimed invention and the closest prior art are identified. Those aspects of the claimed subject matter determined not to contribute to its technical character cannot be used to indicate the presence of an inventive step since they do not contribute to any technical solution. However, they may be used in the formulation of the objective technical problem as a constraint to be met. Thus, the technical problem is formulated based on the identified technical differences between the claimed subject matter and the closest prior art. Presence of an inventive step is assessed by deciding whether the skilled person, having knowledge of the prior art, would consider it obvious to solve the problem posed in the manner proposed by the claimed subject matter. We will now look at some relevant case law regarding the assessment of inventive step for computer-implemented inventions. The three following decisions, T64100, Comvic, T17203, Rico, and T25803, Hitachi, make a clear point that a patentable invention must define a new and non-obvious technical solution to a technical problem. Comvic teaches that it is the technical contribution an invention makes to a technical field that is decisive for the assessment of inventive step. Features that do not contribute to the technical character of an invention cannot support the presence of inventive step. For example, distributing costs according to a claimed kind of cost attributing scheme is rather a financial and administrative concept which as such does not require the exercise of any technical skill and does not, on the administrative level, involve a solution to a technical problem. The assessment of inventive step requires the identification of the technical content of the claimed subject matter, the choice of the closest technical prior art, and the selection of the person skilled in a technical field who is to be faced with a realistic objective technical problem. 
where a claim refers to an aim to be achieved in a non-technical field, such as to distribute costs according to an administrative scheme, this aim may legitimately appear in the formulation of the problem as part of the framework of the technical problem that is to be solved, in particular as a constraint that has to be met. RICO provides an objective approach for the assessment of inventive step for computer-implemented inventions, taking into account the principles developed in recent case law. It teaches to identify first the aspects of the claimed features which define the non-technological part of the invention, in this case an order management process. Then to identify the clearly technical aspects of the claimed features, in this case a normal distributed office information system. It considered that the claimed invention is distinguished from a normal distributed information system only in terms of functional features and data structures for implementing the essentially business-related aspects and features of the order management method. The claimed technical solution not going beyond the concept of a mere automation of constraints imposed by the business-related aspects. Such automation using conventional hardware and programming methods being considered obvious to a skilled person. So we can say, where the claim differs from the closest prior art only in a mere automation of constraints imposed by the purely non-technical aspects, such automation using conventional hardware and programming methods is considered to be obvious to a skilled person. In the case of Hitachi, the board concluded that method steps consisting of modifications to a business scheme and aimed at circumventing a technical problem rather than solving it by technical means, cannot contribute to the technical character of the subject matter claimed. The problem of delays in propagation of information between bidders and a server is a technical problem. However, solving this problem by adapting an auction method such that any data transmission delays become irrelevant is not a technical solution, since it only concerns modification to the rules of the auction and not, for example, the delays in propagation of information. We will now see the allowable categories of a claim for a computer-implemented invention. A claim for a computer-implemented invention can be formulated in the following claim categories. Method claims, for example, a method of operating a data processing system. Apparatus or system claims, for example, a system for data processing. Computer program and storage medium, data carrier with computer program claims. Signal claims, data structure claims. The computer program, storage medium or data carrier with computer program claims are allowed when a corresponding method or apparatus claim is also allowable. A signal claim is allowed if it is defined in terms of the technical features of the system in which it occurs assuming that the system itself is patentable. A data structure claim is allowed if it is defined in terms which inherently comprise the technical features of the program or system which operates on said data structure, assuming that the program or system itself is patentable. Let us see now some possible claim formulations. If we define claim 1 as a method of operating a data processing system comprising steps A, B and so on, a corresponding apparatus claim could be formulated as a data processing apparatus system comprising means for carrying out the method of claim 1. Another possibility would be to define the apparatus claim without any reference to the method claim by explicitly specifying all the means necessary to perform the invention. For example, a data processing apparatus system comprising means for carrying out step A, means for carrying out step B, and so on. For the computer program and storage medium with computer program claim categories, similar formulations are possible. Two example formulations are a computer program product adapted to perform the method of claim 1, or a computer program comprising software code adapted to perform steps A, B, and so on, when executed on a data processing apparatus system. A computer-readable storage medium data carrier comprising the program of Claim 1. 
a computer-readable storage medium data carrier comprising instructions to cause a data processing apparatus system to carry out steps A, B when loaded into said data processing apparatus system. The expressions in brackets are optional. Similar formulations can be used for signal and data structure claims. You have now reached the end of Module 2. Thank you for using this e-learning module of the European Patent Academy.